Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. And as usual, it is your host, it is your your guy, your educator, Mr. Karen Rose. So DJ, I'm going to need you to fade us all the way out because we got to talk to the people. We have so much to talk to the people about. <laughs> it is episode number 123. It is uh, Wednesday, April 5th. Now, my goodness... If you realized, our last episode was actually February 23rd. Not even, I don't even think February 23rd. I think it was I think it was the 13th. Let me just double check. Let me No, the 13th. February 13th was our last episode. And the reason for that, you know, impromptu break was boy oh boy. A couple of things happened. Uh, one, the main thing was uh, after th- after February 13th, the week after, was Carnival here in Trinidad and Tobago. So a lot was going on. Um, a lot was going on, and I just felt like, okay, you know what? Uh, we would resume after Carnival, right? Let everybody, you know, everybody that's flying in, all these events are happening, um, both, you know, party-wise or social-wise and then also business-wise. There's just a lot happening during that time. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to resume after uh, the carnival is done, right? And then shortly after the carnival, um, I ended up getting sick. I ended up getting a viral infection out of nowhere where I was in a meeting one day and I just started to feel dizzy. And I'm here thinking, okay, maybe uh, I didn't eat. I didn't eat breakfast before the meeting, so maybe I'm just hungry, right? But I was feeling dizzy. And then by the time I, you know, finished the meeting, I got home, I went to sleep, and, like, it just went all downhill from there. Like, I woke up, and I was just dizzy, uh, brain fog, migraines, um, you name it. The worst part about it was uh, the following day, I realized that, like, my vision started to get very blurry. Like, I just couldn't see uh, past my arm. Everything was just very, very blurry. My eyes started to hurt, man. And then I could hardly walk. Like, it was like, I felt drunk. Like, if you've ever been pissed drunk to the point where you can't walk, your speech is slurring, your vision is blurry, you know, that's what it felt like. And it took a while for them to get a diagnosis. So I had to do, like, the CT scans and MRIs and blood work and yada, yada, yada. And then it ended up, uh, it ended up uh, being that uh, the CT scan was showing there was too much mucus in my brain caused from um, whatever the vi- whatever the the viral infection was, um, and that kind of just messed with my senses and whatnot. So when they finally seen what was going on, they gave me the right uh, meds to start to clear up the mucus, and uh, things started to get better. And then the minute I got better, I think maybe about this is almost two weeks ago now. Uh, Got better, where again my vision was getting better. I could walk again, talk again without any problems. Um, like if if everything went away, like let's just say if I felt ninety five percent on like a Wednesday, the Thursday I ended up I ended up getting a fever right after that. <laughs> ended up getting a fever. Uh, I started to get like bad migraines again, and then um, I started to get earaches, and the earaches were killing me. And that only lasted for a couple of days. So from like Thursday and then every and then by the Monday everything was cleared up, and yeah, it ended up forcing me to be out for the month of March. Now, you know, 
the funny thing about it, the funny thing about all of that was was that you know, uh, I think everybody that reached out, I got, I, I th- thank you to everybody that reached out. Thank you to everybody that reached out, sent their their words of of love and encouragement and whatnot. And I, you know, even if I didn't get to you know respond to everybody because man, Ronald's going through it, like I could hardly even. Like, there'd be times I'd be laying in bed and I'd be bored, so I'd, like, open my phone and I'd be trying to squint through one eye just to see what's happening on the phone. But it was just a painstaking experience to even look at a screen or anything like that. So I wasn't, I didn't get to respond to to most people's messages or whatnot. But um, when I got better and I could see better, I started to see a lot of the messages. So I know there were coming in, calls came in. Thank you for everybody that showed their support, right? Uh, the funny thing, though, is... Uh, being down for a month taught me some really important things. So the one thing that it really showed me was that um, a lot of people that reached out were like, oh, you know, you work too hard, you're running your body to the ground, and, and this is what happens when you work too hard and you're doing too much. And I would read these comments or, you know, hear people tell it to me in person or over the phone or whatever, and I laughed because I'm like, yo, people don't understand that my business has systems. So when you're talking, when you think I'm here just working, 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 working hard, that's not even the case. Half the things that you see online are things that I've created at one point in time or I've repurposed or I've spent a day to create, you know, uh, a couple of assets and some articles or some videos and then they get released through the week or however they or however I do it. Or even if I wake up and I create a piece of content, I might create an article, I might create this blog. That might be the only thing I've done for that day. And there's a reason why I'm able to have uh, my midday naps. You know, I'm notorious for my midday naps, right? I go, I get my two hours midday to sleep. Some days I even get two, two, two naps during the daytime, right? My systems in place allow me to show up 10 times more than almost anybody else that you can think of uh, in the Caribbean because of the systems that I have in place, because of the platforms that I'm on where you can pretty much consume my content or see me anywhere else. So the majority of people are putting in more work, are working harder and putting in more time than me. I have systems that allow me to work very, very smart now and allow me to make a bigger impact and show up in more countries and show up in a much, much bigger way, right? So I thought it was very interesting because I th- like people thought, people think, yo, you work too hard, you're working 24-7. And then on the flip side to that is, I'm like, yo, I'm actually trying to build something. So hard work like working for what you are trying to build is always going to have a level of sacrifice and working hard like there's there's no way about it so when you see me you know uh in this country or that country or being able to you know renovate my house be you know i'm not stressed about anything i don't have money problems i don't have bill problems my like i'm good like it it took a while it took years of sacrifice where I wouldn't party, I wouldn't do this, or I wouldn't do that, or I would just be very conservative with how I spent my money and always put the money back into the business so that now I'm, I'm, I'm eating from the fruits of my labor. So now when it looks like you're seeing me working 24-7, I'm not. I've put in the work over the years to build a system that allow me to make money even while I'm not working allow me to generate opportunities even when I'm not working because when opportunities come in, when someone's booking me to do a workshop or booking me to do um, a speaking gig or flying me out or whatever the case is, the majority of the time it's because they've seen content over the years, stuff that I've done, you know, a long time ago and they're now just getting to consume it um, or maybe they've gone down the rabbit hole and they're seeing all the other things that I've done. And that's already sold me. And, and most times, it's not even anything new that I've created, right? So your systems got to be in play. And it made me realize that my systems are working very, very well because, again, the outlook of people is, yo, you're working 24-7. And for me, that's just never really the case. I tend to do my work in the morning time from 3 to 7 a.m. 
Um, not every single day am I meeting with people. Not every single day do I have a call, uh, a consultant call or a workshop to do or a speaking gig to do. But, you know, I wake up 3 to 7 o'clock in the morning, create my content, um, schedule it out. And sometimes not the things that I create don't come out on the same day because they're being sent to other platforms. So whenever they come out, they come out, you know. <laughs> so that really, that really, uh, you know, kind of showed me, you know, that my systems are working. And then the other thing that the other thing that I realized is that, you know, being down for being down for a month, you know, I realized that the way I make money um, has definitely has definitely allowed me to be off for a month and sort myself out. And I was able to because I had to go to like, man, I was in I went to like five different um, specialists. Then I had to go to two different eye hospitals. And every time you go see the doctor, it's money. And, you know, usually when you have any sort of medical procedures to be done, you're always worried because, you know, it, it, it's pop-up expenses. And unless you've saved a lot of money for the rainy day, you know, sometimes you don't have the money to pay for uh, your medical bills that just pop up. And, you know, this this was, the, I, I don't get sick. The last time I got sick was two and a half years ago when I got COVID. And time before that was probably maybe three years before COVID that I get sick. I'm not, a, I don't get, I really don't get sick. Right. So this just came out of kind of this kind of just came out of nowhere. And I was able to pay all of my all of my medical bills and all of my other things. I didn't miss a beat and I didn't stress about anything. Um, and I was able to just take everything in stride. I didn't at no point, even when I was feeling sick, even when I could barely see all my vision was all blurry and it was just a mess. Like at no point did I feel stressed about anything happening i didn't feel stressed about money bills my kids not being able to do what they gotta do like at just no point i just i felt any stress and it just was a testament to just mentally you know where i'm at in my life so that was, again that was just a that was a kind of um of a heat check that was just kind of a you know just something to remind me hey you know you you have grown over over these years You've become very resilient and you don't stress. You don't stress the way that you might have stressed about, you know, things like this a couple of years ago. So we really, I, it really showed to me that I'm on a, in my own journey, I'm on a different uh, playing field right now. And it just, and it also showed me the, the importance of, you know, diversifying your incomes, making sure that, you know, you're not just making income in just one particular fashion or from one particular stream diversify your incomes and you know you got to double down on that because you just never know what is going to happen in this life you never you never never know and the last thing you want is to be in a situation where you know you can't afford you know your medical bills or you can't afford you know what's happening with your kids or you can't afford you just don't want to be in a position where you can't afford and because there are so many ways for us to create incomes for ourselves and you're not limited to just, you know, what we do here in Trinidad and Tobago or limited to just the Caribbean, you know, you owe it to yourself to start learning how to gain new skills, uh, learn how to navigate the digital world and the gig economy. Like you owe it to yourself to do these things because the money and opportunities are there. You just have to be in, um, uh, position mentally to want to go after it because now it's not even about you need to have the money to go and learn skills and be able to generate money no you there's so much great courses from reputable from reputable institutions where you can get knowledge and certifications at no cost there's so many all right so it, you're not even just limited to YouTube. Yes, go to YouTube, learn. I mean, we know there's a lot of amazing things on YouTube. We know there's a lot of bad things on YouTube. But go to YouTube and use, and use YouTube. But there's a lot of credible institutions that are providing you courses for free because they make their money other ways. And you can get certified in a variety of different things right now 
and start to turn a new path. Either that creates some side income or maybe that changes, you know, your full-time job. But the opportunities are there. Make sure you guys are going are going after them. And again, I know for me, that's really what this entire thing did for me was just was just a reminder that, yo, you, you have put yourself in a really good position over the years, both m- most importantly mentally, because you, you, you went through this entire situation smiling and laughing, even though you couldn't see nobody's face. You know, you really didn't have nothing much to laugh about because you were in pain the majority of the time. But every day I found a new reason to laugh. I found a new reason to crack a joke. I had people telling me, they're like, yo, you're taking this in very well. And I'm just like, yeah, man, like, because I know, I know that when all this is over, when I get back, you know, I'm going to turn up. (laughs) I'm getting a month of rest right now to just relax and just to think and recalibrate. And, you know, and maybe this is, maybe this was God's plan where, yo, you just need to sit down for a month, sit down for a month, you know, relax, you know. Be grateful about everything that's going on in your life and everything that you have. And relax. Recharge your batteries. You know, we got some more work to do. You don't, you don't need to be doing anything stressful in March. <laughs> you don't got to be doing anything stressful in March. I'm going to need you for April, though. <laughs> so that's kind of how I, that's kind of how, you know, where I was at mentally, you know, for, for March. It was just, hey, you know, take your break. Relax. You know, don't stress. You know, everything is good. Everything around you is good. What you've created is good. You know, take your break. And then come April, you know, as soon as, as soon listen to me, as soon as the last week of March hit where I was like, yo, I'm good now, the call started to come in immediately. The call started to come in immediately to book for workshops, events, locally and internationally. And, you know, we picked up right where we left off, you know. And again, now we, we're kicking back off the podcast right where we left off. So, that's just a recap of as to where I've been over the last month and just, you know, some of the, some of the random thoughts about, about uh, you know, what I've kind of just uh, learned about myself. And, you know, there's always gems in everybody's story. So take what you need and throw away the rest, all right? So to get into today's episode, Lord, we spoke for 17 minutes and we didn't even get into today's topic. So I won't overdo it for today. But today's topic is about the rise of false experts and faux leaders, right? The rise of false experts and faux leaders. Now, this is a, whew, <laughs> this is something that has been happening for years now. For years and years and years, this is something that has been happening with the the rise of social media, right? Remember, it is now easier than ever for people to just show up overnight and start to want to quote unquote coach people or you know be an expert. And the reason why it's so easy to do that, especially in the Caribbean, especially in the Caribbean, is the Caribbean doesn't have the checks and balances, you know, like a lot of these other places. So we know that, you know, false coaches and, and, and you know, the experts, we know they, they're, they're, they're faking it for the win on, in other countries and other first world countries as well. But there's so many more checks and balances. It's a lot harder for them to do it, right? And a lot easier for them to, to get called out and spotted. Versus us, where we don't have a lot of the a lot of our industries aren't necessarily really regulated, um, and the, a lot of the people you know lack discernment. A lot of the population lacks discernment to see you know who is real, who is not. You know what types of questions to be asking to figure out you know who 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 is who and you know kind of what you should be looking for. Right. So. The digital age has given rise to many new industries, you know, new skill sets and platforms for people to get their message out. And when used correctly, this has been a powerful, this has really been powerful in helping to grow the, 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 the consciousness, the intellect and provide new skill sets for the wider population, right? When you think about how we can learn and tap into the world of knowledge through our phones and learn and find out about anything. It's absolutely, truly amazing versus, you know, when you're 
when our when when we were growing up, I'm 36. When we were growing up, we had the encyclopedia. So there was a limited amount of in, information that was put into the encyclopedias, but it was also a heck of a lot of quality control that went in to the encyclopedias. You know, you were you couldn't just be any and everybody contributing to the encyclopedias, right? But now, you know, we have this open world. We have all these platforms. Everybody has a voice. Um, so anybody can just, you know, pop up and create the platforms. And then when you think about you have tools like Canva, Fiverr, all of the art tools that allow people to now create the aesthetics of their posts, create their logos. It's easy for them to create this brand that looks good. So it looks like it's reputable, reputable, reputable. Because the, the aesthetics are good, right? The person, the man or the female might be looking very good as well. And we already know that science shows that people who, who have this look of, of beauty are the ones who tend to be heard more, or trusted more. That is, we, you know, we've seen all the science uh, in that. People who, who look good tend to be more believable than the people who are not, right? So that's another reason when you see a lot of your coaches and uh, a lot of your coaches and experts, when you're seeing them always talking about, you know, their health, they're in the gym, they're working on, they're taking you on that journey. And, and it aids to that image. It aids to that trustworthiness because, again, science has shown that the better people look, you know, the more trustworthy that they are. It's messed up, but that's just what, you know, that's just what it is. So whilst, you know, the fact that we have all these platforms available to us to create your brand and put your put your voice out there. This has been one of the greatest things that's ever happened for us. You know, I, I I leverage it, right? I have the I have all my channels and whatnot, and you guys listen and follow. But there has been a major rise. In, there has been a major rise in the false coaches and faux experts over the years because they have access to the same information and have learned the art of repackaging said information for resale. The major problem with that is so much of the content and information we consume comes from lived experiences of the actual experts and their information can show the nuances of the topics they are breaking down. Now, with everybody able to use tools like Canva, create their brands online and repackage the information and make it look pretty, <laughs> some are even making the information look better than the actual originators of the information, for, <laughs> for crying out loud. You know, they're finding, uh, they're finding ways to resell all of the information online and just kind of repackaging the experts' experiences. And it is the people... The, the audience who don't know better and they're spending their money on the fake experts and they're losing out big because they're simply regurgitating information that they found online. And if you are not, so just imagine you have the actual experts who have spent the thousands and thousands of hours on their research, their findings, um, honing in on their skill sets, right getting the qualifications getting the certifications doing the studies actually doing the work and then they are putting their information out online they're putting the information out in their books they're putting the information out in their courses and you literally have people who are buying the books buying the courses reading all their content and just repackaging every single thing that they are saying but they themselves haven't gone through the thousands of hours of research and honing in on the skill. They ha have not gotten the qualifications or certifications needed for that particular industry, right? They have not went and got out any real world experiences within that space. They are literally just regurgitating the information and when situations do come up that are similar to what the actual expert has has talked about, then they just use their you just they just tweak their experiences and again, that's the type of information they're using to give to the clientele. And 
we'll, we'll get drill dive deeper into it. So this is why you have these coaches that are popping up overnight with no body of work. Nobody's heard about them. They have no body of work. And even if you have heard about them for a while now, when you look at what they have done, when you when you try to find their their body of work, there really is no track record. The most you'll see is you'll see testimonials from people. And the testimonials are some of the fluffiest things you will ever see. So when you're reading the testimonials from people, you'll see things like, oh my God, this person was amazing. They're so intelligent. Um, they helped me so much. Uh, they taught me. Uh, they taught me more about myself. Um, I, I, got to, I got to come out of my comfort zone. Oh, they're so smart. Um, they're, they have a lot of energy. Like you're reading some of these testimonials and you're like, okay, but what was the end result with them working with, with you working with them? You're talking about how smart they are, or how great they are, or how educational they are, or you know, how much they how much you've learned about yourself. Like, but like what was the actual tangible end result? And this is why I don't like to really uh, follow testimonials because when you're reading a lot of the testimonials from in the Caribbean, from other businesses, there's almost nothing tangible about any of the testimonials. It's really just all fluff. Nobody is talking about what the end result was. So just imagine, just imagine I'm a business coach and I'm working with you for three months. And our goal together was to help you uh, get your business registered, help you put in your accounting tools, help you understand how to read a balance sheet. Like just imagine like, the, like our relationship was, was, was to do tangible things like that. And then when the, person re, when the person gives you the testimonial, the person's like, oh my God, they're so smart. They taught me so much about myself and they were just amazing. What does that teach you about the service provider? And a lot of times when you ask the person, or even if you don't ask the person, let's just say you go and find the expert and you look at the people that they are working with. If you know that, hey, this person was working with that, with, with that person, this was, this was their engagement, and you're not seeing any of that in the client, that's a testimony, that's the real testimony about the coach. Right, the real testimony about the coach is: Did you actually help to execute on what you said you were going to do? Now we know there are bad clients out there. We deal with that all the time. I can smell a bad client away, or I could smell a client who is not ready to put in the work to work with me. And as soon as I smell it, I tell them no. I don't. I no. I tell them no because I already know in my in my in my gut that even when we work together, you're not going to actually get any of the things done. And that is just going to hurt the coach's brand as well. But the testimonials that you read, you really need to pay attention. Is there anything tangible about the testimonials? And 9 out of 10, 9.9 .9 out of the testimonials you're going to read from a lot of the coaches and experts are really just fluff, nothing tangible. They can't actually talk about, you know, what was the true end result of working together. And that's a big big red flag so we have all these coaches that are popping up overnight literally overnight um, and they're popping up in business business coaches they're marketing coaches they're finance coaches there are life coaches there are mindset coaches there are success coaches man listen there are confidence coaches there there are there are so many titles that are popping up overnight right and i'm sure by the end of this episode there's going to be i'll go online i'm going to see another type of of coach there's happiness coaches there's literally a coach for almost any and everything that you can think of and what you need to think about what you need to be thinking about is 
is how important it is now more than ever for you to learn how to tell the difference between a good and a bad coach because you stand to lose a lot of money. You stand to lose a lot of time invested. And in some cases, it can even affect your mental health. Like I've, I've, I've seen clients or I've met with people that have talked about how their coach that they were working with who was supposed to help them actually uh, actually ended up uh, getting them going to therapy it from a bad from that, from a bad experience not because you know they, the the coach was like you know I think you need therapy no it was the, the the interaction was so bad they ended up going to therapy because of how bad the, the interaction is not everybody can teach folks not everybody can actually guide you to where you need to go not something you have to keep in mind so imagine these scenarios that are currently happening right now. You start your business and you decide to hire a business coach to help you put all of the infrastructure in place for your business. Yet that business coach has never actually had a business other than their business of coaching people about how to build a business. That is a mindfuck. <laughs> You cannot be a business coach that has never built a business before. Now, I know people are going to jump up and be like, well, that's not necessarily true. We have coaches in sports who have never played the game. Or we have teachers who are teaching entrepreneurship and who have never uh, built a business. Well, let's tackle the coaches first in sports. Nobody makes it to head coach without years and years and years of vetting, right? So if you want to be an NBA head coach, you did not just wake up and see a vacancy online and just apply and get the job. No, the head coaches, the assistant coaches, if they have never actually played the game, the majority of them have. The majority of them have played in collegiate. They have played in, um, you know, in minors, a lot of them have played in college, right? So they've played some level of, of competitive sports. Um, they might not have made it to the pros. Some have made it to the pros. Some were probably not, some were not very good at the pros, right? But after they decided, okay, you know what? Uh, to actually play the sport isn't me, but they love the sport. They spend hours at the lowest levels. They might be spend, They might be the film guy. They might be flicking, like, they, they, they work their way up throughout the entire organization. So by, by the time they even make assistant coach, they have been in the coaching fraternity for 15 to 20 years. And they have been groomed by some of the best coaches, and that is how they're able to get the reins. So they're not just popping up overnight. Again, they're not popping up overnight. Even if they did not play the game, um, at the highest level, they were around it and they were able to get into the organization and start from the absolute lowest level, make peanuts and work their way up to through the ranks, right? And then ask for teachers. The teacher is not the one that are creating the curriculum. The curriculum is set and they're working from an already predetermined curriculum, right? And on top of that, when you are in a business class, and you realize your teacher has never built a business, you automatically start to realize the information could only ever be taken with a grain of salt because they themselves haven't gone through anything. The information hits different when you are learning from somebody that has actually gone through it. And when somebody hasn't gone through it, the information is night and day, and they're only reading from the book. And then you have to decide, is this the best use of your money and your time? And a lot of people don't want to put their, they don't want to put the blame on them. Like, it is a choice for you to go to school. It is a choice for you to take an entrepreneurship class. It is a choice for you that when you realize, hey, the teacher hasn't actually built any business and some of the information really isn't sitting right, it is your job now to act on that. Do you still want to stay in that particular class and learn from somebody who has never built anything in their life? Or do you want to leave that class and go and find somebody that can help you? You have to, you got to exercise discernment and make those types of decisions, right? So we are seeing life coaches popping up everywhere. And the A, what it kills me with life coaches is life sounds so final, right? Like I have completed life, I have resurrected, 
and I have come back to teach you the lessons I have learned over the last hundred years. Like that, to me, when I hear life coaches, that is the first thing I think about. I think about somebody here who, who, who has, either they're old, they have gone through a lot of stuff in their life, they, 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 you know, they have at least clocked 60 years. <laughs> They've at least clocked 60 years on this world at minimum, right? Um, and, to, and to me, and, 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 and to me, that's where life coach, I think, has to start. Like, what, what, what we're seeing popping up is we're seeing all these life coaches popping up who are in their 20s and early 30s. And I'm not sure what type of life experience you have had at these early stages for you to turn this into a business to be able to teach people how to live a better life. It, it doesn't sit well with me. You in your 20s, early 30s, and you're a life coach, and this is a business where you are now turning around and teaching people how to live a better life, it doesn't sit well with me. And anybody paying them, well, you're going to get what you pay for, right? Again, you got to exercise the sermon. You can't stop nobody from, from trying to hustle you. Right? You can't stop nobody. And there's no rules or regulations that are stopping them from like there isn't a there isn't a, a, a like life coaches you know are kind of trying to be pseudo therapists in a way, and there isn't no overarching body that is you know watching what they're doing and, and regulating them. If there was, that it, this would look very differently, right? Next, now we also have mindset coaches that are popping up all over the place. There's mindset coaches. They're just popping up because we've realized that, you know, everything starts with having the right mindset to do anything, whether it is uh, to learn something new, whether it is to get yourself out of a funk, uh, to make major changes in your life, to go to the gym, to start working out, to stay consistent in anything. Everything revolves and starts with mindset. So mindset coaches have found out that, you know, since everything starts with mindset, they're in a very important position because they know that without the right mindset, you know, you, you, you're not going to do anything, right? That being said, check this out. I was speaking with a group of therapists the other day, and they said one of the biggest challenges they face in the Caribbean is that mindset coaches are all trying to provide therapy level services and are not governed by any of the rules and regulations of therapists. Most of them, most of the mindset coaches that you are seeing online right now have not gone to school for any degree or any space within the the the, uh, the, the therapy the therapy level uh, spaces right and those that might have owned a first degree in psychology so there are some that have a first degree in psychology that doesn't qualify you to be providing any form of therapy or mental health services mindset coaches have no qualifications to be teaching what they do, nor is there any overarching body to regulate them like the rest of the actual mental health care fraternity. You do not need a mindset coach. What you actually need is a therapist. Now, there are actual doctors and therapists who have learned how to shift your mindset. That's pretty much the job. <laughs> and they have also learned different modalities right and, and and this is the important part you have doctors you have actual psychotherapists and therapists the people who have gone got the necessary qualifications to be able to call themselves a therapist to call themselves a doctor to call themselves a psychother psychotherapist you have the actual doctors who have learned different modalities who have learned things like breath work who have learned things like, you know, how to reparent your inner child. You have them out there. So why are you going to unqualified people to try to teach you these things and provide you watered-down services when they themselves haven't gone through the necessary uh, channels to properly educate themselves and get certified? All of the people that I read my content from, one of my favorites is Dr. Nicole LaPera. Holistic psychologist. She teaches in multiple modalities, but guess what? She's also a doctor. So she's also clinically trained as a clinical psychologist. And she has integrated all of the different modalities that are out there from the breath work, 
from your re, uh, uh, inner child reparenting. Like she's integrated all of these modalities, but she's actually gone through uh, becoming a doctor, becoming a clinical psychologist. So yes, I would spend my money with her because she is qualified and certified to do what she's doing, and she has put in the well over a thousand hours in research. You guys are getting, you guys are getting um, wrapped up in the fact that people are saying, you know, they've worked with twenty people, they've worked with fifty people, they've worked with a hundred people. What does that mean? Do you know any of them? Are you looking at? Are any of those people doing better? You're not even going to get that type of, of of information because. A lot of it is, 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 is personal. So you need to really watch who you are spending your money with. And a lot of the life coaches and mindset coaches, the other thing that the, ther- the group of therapists told me is that uh, their, their overarching body that regulates them also regulates how much they can charge for mental health services. Whereas the mindset coaches and the life coaches and the success coaches and you name it, Anybody kind of offering pseudo therapy services, they're charging whatever they want. And sometimes it's, it's almost 50 times more than what therapists are even allowed to charge. So you, you really need to think about that. You really, really need to think about that, right? So what I want to say is you have a duty, a duty to perform your own due diligence. So let me give you guys five ways to look for a bad coach, whether it's in marketing, business, you name it, or, you know, uh, one of the faux experts. How do we spot them now? So number one is ask them for their body of work. What does their body of work or portfolio look like? Have they helped achieve results consistently for others and built a track record of success? Look past all of the fluffy testimonials that they post on social media, whether it's a video, whether it's a post, look past the fluffy uh, testimonials. Look for testimonials that says, hey, I worked with this person. They helped me achieve X, Y, and Z. If you don't see that, again, that's a red flag. You are putting yourself at risk. And when you feel like you do not get what you are supposed to get out of it, you only have you to blame, right? Number two, do they have ev- a new program or new promotion every single week or every single month? This one kills me. The coaches and these false experts who continuously do this are usually the ones struggling and trying to play a numbers game. They're trying to catch any and everybody they can into their coaching programs so that they can pay their bills at your expense. So every single week, there is a new coaching program. There is a new special. There is a new discount every single week, every single month. There is no core offerings. It's just, hey, let's just try to throw something new and shiny at them every week or every month. That way we can just try to get people in because they're not getting people at all. And they're not getting people, and, and it's because for, the, for a good bit, people are exercising discernment. But a lot of the, these coaches should not even be in business. You have a lot of these coaches who are living off of other means. They're living at home with their parents. They are living, um, they're living with somebody who is paying all of their bills, and they're just trying to make money off of you. The business itself is not generating enough money for them to even live off of that, right? And they're trying to catch you. So look out for the people who every month, every week, new coaching program, new special, new this, new that. You have to, you have to watch those things. Number three, is the coach full-time in their business? Now you're thinking to yourself, you probably thought they are. No, a lot of the coaches, many of these business coaches who are trying to teach you about building a business, They have full-time jobs, and their coaching business is a side hustle. If the coach isn't relying on the money from their own business to live and eat, chances are they cannot help you. I cannot imagine you going to a business coach to help you build your business, and they have a full-time job because their business practice isn't generating enough money or any money And if you can't build your own business, then why are you trying to teach people about building a business, right? 
So if they're full-time in another business and they're not relying on their business to provide for them, then why do you think they can help you build a business and, and, and get you to a point where you are relying on your funds from your business? Why do you think that's going to happen? Again, red flag, red flag. Number four, do they practice what they preach? Since many of the coaches and experts are regurgitating and repackaging the information they find online, many of them cannot practice what they preach because it requires work and forces them to get results. Be observant. I see a lot of the coaches talking, preaching all of their stuff. But one, I can see where the sources they get their information from. Sometimes I might even go through the list to see who they're following and then I realize, oh, wow, you're just regurgitating your information from this person. And this is the person that has gotten results. When you have to practice what you preach, you actually have to go and get results. This is why when I create all of my content to do all of my workshops, I'm always using my own internal data. When I teach about building websites, that's tangible. I'm teaching you how to build a website. When I'm talking about data, when I'm talking about content marketing, when I'm talking about SEO, when I'm talking about e-commerce, I'm showing you real life data from me. That way, you know, I'm actually doing all of the work and everything that I say that I am doing, right? You need to be observant. Look to see, are they actually doing what they're talking about? It's easy to go and work out in the gym, right? It's easy to go and do that. But if your coach is a business coach, and the only thing tangible that you can see from them is them working out and they can't tangibly show you how to, to, to build your business. Why are you going through them? You're there to learn about getting your business sorted out, not because they look good and, they, and you see them working on their consistent in the gym. They're consistent with all the motivational posts. That's not what you're there for. Yeah, cool. You could like those things if you want, but that's not what's going to help you in the long run, right? And number five, are they teaching something tangible or just inspiring you? This one is big because much of the content that all of the, all of the coaches post online and the conversations they engage with you on are heavy on the inspiration, light on the tangibility. They have the gift of gab. They inspire you to take action, but you are paying them their coaching fees and then you realize they can't coach or help you achieve any of the results you thought you were going to get you need to be vigilant because now the message might be a great message but the messenger is the problem and now with the rise of tools like uh, ai tools like chat gpt and chat sonic and all the other ones that are coming out it's given another powerful way for the false coaches and faux experts to repackage their information without doing any of the work they aren't getting any results, but they are busy selling themselves, taking your money and leaving you to struggle. You got to be observant. You got to be vigilant. And I'm not saying, you know, inspiration is, is, is a bad thing. If you need inspiration from someone else, hey, that's you, right? Me, I don't need inspiration from anybody. I am my own inspiration and motivation to get what I need done. No one, no one can inspire me to do better. I will do better because I want to do better for, for what I'm trying to build, right? But if you need inspiration from somebody, no problem. The problem is if all they're doing is inspiring you and that is enough for you to say, hey, let me pay these people now to be my life coach. Let me pay them to be my mindset coach. Let me pay them to be my marketing or business coach. And all you got was non-tangible inspo content on social media and then again you're paying these people and you realize oh wow they actually can't help me okay or you realize or again when you when you go through who they're following you start to realize that they're just regurgitating everything from the people that they're following and that's one thing you should do when you want to go and hire a coach or you want to go and work with one of these experts go look at the people that they are following because a lot of them are just regurgitating and repackaging the things that they are learning they are literally buying their coaches programs to repackage it and sell it to you but they're not the ones with the actual real world experience or the ten thousand hours to become that expert or they have not gone and done the qualifications the degrees the industry certifications they haven't done any of those things so go and find the actual people that can help you 
And those are five ways that you can look for to determine whether or not that the person is a false expert to or, or, or a faux coach or what have you, okay? So that's it from me today, folks. Uh, this is what this was a good episode back. You know, we're back and pumping. We're back ready to go. April just started and I'm ready to pick up where we left off. So if you uh, enjoy today's conversation, please leave a uh, rating on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Those platforms allow for, you know, you to rate the podcast. Um, you can also drop a review of the podcast. Let me know how you guys felt about today's episode or just the podcast in the whole. The reviews help to continue to grow the Digipreneur family all across the globe. So please drop your reviews, drop your ratings on the podcast if you're listening on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and what have you. Don't forget you can check out uh, caronrose.com to learn more about building your digital presence and monetizing your platforms. You can also check out the digipreneur.fm website to stay up to date on the podcast. You can follow me across social media platforms at K-E-R-O-N-R-O-S-E across Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, most importantly. You can follow me over there. And don't forget every single Friday we have the Digital World Show with myself and Janine Edwards that you can listen to on 106.5 or you can go to the website to watch the live stream. And that is the tbcradionetwork.co.tt. I'll actually link to the stream uh, in the show notes as well. So again, every Friday from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, we are live on 106.5 with the digital world. And we have some really good uh, guests coming up this week. All right. So that is it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoy. Happy, happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, we might get another episode. It's Easter week. It's Easter long weekend coming up. You might get one more episode coming this week. If not, we're going to start fresh on Monday. So that is it for me today, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week and take care. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.